Hey guys, Sullivan Owen here, sitting at my desk enjoying a really lovely fall afternoon. I just checked in a huge shipment of bulbs and I'm getting ready to start two solid weeks of planting out all the beds that I've been working on since August. Um, and one of the questions I got when we did our last tour and I showed some sketches of some of the plans that I was working on is kind of a little more of my process for how I plan and how I design and how I kind of organize all the plants and specifically flowering plants. <coughs> Sorry, fall, I have fall allergies, not spring allergies, and it has just been killer because it's been so beautiful and we've had the windows open and you know, it's fall, things are falling from the trees. Um, so I don't have any uh, formal training in um, garden design or landscape design, but I do read a lot. I've studied a lot of books. There are some designers out there like Pete Udolph, who are really, really kind of informing some of the plant selection that's out there. Um, in the US is probably most famous commission is the High Line in New York. So, um, I can't say that I am sort of duplicating anybody's style, but what seems to have emerged after three years of collecting plants uh, without a super formal plan for our garden, um, it, it seems to have emerged into some really clear color families that I enjoy. I basically started collecting plants on a larger scale, I started looking for specifically some peonies and roses that I have gotten to design with before as cut flowers and they're hard to find. And so I thought, um, why not try planting some of them? Uh, at the beginning of this year, we had started with our tree work and if you haven't watched our garden renovation series, you can catch up on that. Um, but. I knew that I was going to have really a blank canvas and I've spent kind of the last two years grow ordering things that I liked and not really thinking about where they were going to go because I knew that I would be moving a lot of stuff as the tree work happened and, and things started to settle in. So I would say this is the first fall that I feel like I have a, an organized and strategic plan and I also, you know, have finally narrowed things down to some specific color schemes and color flow. And then I'll show you a little bit about how I kind of think about bloom flow throughout the year. Now, I do get a lot of questions. I know um, over the years I've met at workshops and, and teaching, I've met um, a lot of people who grow commercially either for their own wedding studio work or grow to sell to other florists. Um, you're obviously going to plan your year a little bit differently in terms of you're not going to be designing, I presume, garden beds with them, but you can also kind of think about either doing the spreadsheet that I do and including like a peak bloom time or <clears throat> doing this kind of visual uh, for your year and kind of see, grouping things by color. Uh, I treat my garden beds uh, like if I have an event. I'm probably ordering in or shopping for 90% of what I need. And then I'm kind of looking around my garden to see if there's anything that looks peak or prime that wants to join the party. I don't think that my husband would appreciate me cutting all the flowers from our garden. And I think that that's a misconception that I see a lot about having a cutting garden kind of separated from your main beds. Uh, unless you are trying to pull 20 to 40 event arrangements out of your garden, I think it's probably pretty hard to decimate an entire perennial planting in one cutting session. Uh, there are some shrubs and things like that that I have learned that th those that bloom on new wood I can cut from, those that bloom on old wood I'm going to have to kind of, you know, layer how I cut from them, but for the most part I haven't cut anything down in our garden that we have sorely missed. And I think as you, we get into some of the worksheets and plans, you'll see that I'll have a lot of options. So uh, the garden I'm really planning is sort of the way I would design these arrangements. 
in flower bed form. So uh, it's been really fun and satisfying to see the garden beds come together this year. And in the next few weeks, planting for spring, um, I'm really, really looking forward to next spring. I think, I mean, I think almost everybody is super excited to get this year over with. Um, and I don't think I'm so excited because I foresee things with my small business returning to any kind of normalcy. But, you know, they the thing about gardening that I didn't think would resonate with me, but it does, is that um, it's an exercise in optimism. You know, I'm working so hard to plant through, I have uh, about 2,500 bulbs to plant for fall in the next few weeks. I'm adding in and moving all the peonies and um, moving around some roses and adding in some hellebore plugs and things like that that uh, are arriving now for fall planting. So it's an exercise in optimism. For you guys that haven't seen my worksheets, I have a large uh, multi-tabbed spreadsheet that I keep uh, different plant categories. So I have peony, iris, or sorry, reading iris, but pulling up roses. And um, these are roses and I keep different information, size. I always recommend if you're shopping online, doing your orders, if you like a spreadsheet, grab a thumbnail, grab a photo of it while you're shopping and add it into your list. Um, but, and then I have them kind of grouped by family. And then I don't know why I do this, but I do total them. Um, so this year, uh, this will wrap up the peonies for this season. There are a few in here that I think I need to edit. Oh, no, it looks like I edited them out. I had a few herbaceous reds that um, I am culling from my own garden, but I will be giving away. Um, I'm probably going to winter them over and then um, give them away in the spring. But um, now at this point, I kind of know what colors I favor, what I felt like I was kind of missing this year. and. The flowers, most of the flowers I grew this year were annuals, so I'm just trying to transition from some of the, the aggressive seed starting I did. You can check out that very long seed starting video, um, maybe before winter. <clears throat> Actually, everybody's ordering seeds early, so start figuring out what seeds you want to order now, because lots of stuff's already sold out. But, um, you know, at this point, after three years, I have very distinctive color families that I like. Peonies, roses, um, if you watch the Bearded Iris video, um, I, I got a lot of iris. And I ordered these, uh, I, I made a lot of these plant purchases pre-COVID. And so last year wasn't really able to plant a lot of bulbs. I was able to just do some tulips in containers and I grew some anemones and some ranunculus in the middle of winter for early spring. And all did well. Um, the anemones were so much fun. I had always known that they were like a really prolific flowering plant. Like one plant gives you tons of blooms, but <clears throat> it was really impressive to just kind of see it. So I knew that this year for fall that I would have my beds in place for the most part and I should be able to add in some flowering bulbs that I would like to naturalize in place. So I did, uh, I did plan for a large bulb buy for this fall planting and they actually all just started arriving. It's a lot of uh, daffodils. I don't tend to like bright, bright yellow. I think if you've watched the channel at all for a long time, we've gone over that. I have a tough time working with super bright sunflower forsythia daffodil yellow. But I love pale yellows, golden yellows, apricot peach, um, tulips in kind of moody colors, darker colors. I'm trying some new ones. I'm really, really hoping this one ships. I haven't. Um, seen it. It sold out already on Eden Brothers. I want to say I pre-ordered it maybe in April or May, like the minute it was available on their website. Um, and then some things that are just kind of new to me for growing last year. I only did one kind of muscari. It did really well. I love the kind of China Delft blue colors. Um, 
So some fritillaria, more anemones, more ranunculus. I'm uh, actually doing, um, I'm going to do a, a winter sowing of some ranunculus and anemones to try and do a better job of kind of flowing out the blooms. Um, and I'm going to be using a cold frame for that and um, just kind of getting creative because I have some pretty big quantities of stuff coming in. <clears throat> um, uh, if we haven't met, I have black and white anemones tattooed all over me, so I, I do really enjoy them. They also were a flower that I used a lot when I first um, when I first started getting um, some attention for my business when I opened up, and so it sort of became a signature flower for my studio. Um, but I had access this year to a bunch of different varieties in pretty large quantities. So I'm planting one, two, three, four, four, four varieties of white with black center anemones. Similarly to how I did seeds last year, I'm planting a lot of different things within the same variety to see which ones I really love that I can carry forward. And that would be the same for the ranunculus. Now, ranunculus are not something that I'm planting in the fall. I will be sowing them, starting them in January and cold frame protecting them so that I, they hopefully start blooming a little earlier. And then I'm gonna save about half of them to do for a later spring into early summer flow, hopefully. So then jumping over here to uh, so I used PowerPoint for this. I feel like it's slightly dated, but um, I do a lot, I've always done a lot of work in PowerPoint. Um, a long time ago when I worked in visual merchandising, we were, we were switched over to this program to create kind of direction. I used to run visual for, for a bunch of clothing stores. And so I would do these proposals uh, I, I modeled my proposals for clients off of the visual direction that I used to send out and now I'm basically creating merchandising plans for my own garden for myself. But it just kind of helps like when I'm working on an area I can take this one page out with me to my kind of garden cold frame plant storage area and pull the specific iris that I'm looking for you know, grab the specific peonies or peony roots and make sure that the roses are ending up in the right place. Um, it's not uh, as detailed as some people who like to, you know, do um, bird's eye plans and draw everything. I do do some of that, but this is just kind of like a visual way for me to say like, okay, if you're out shopping, this is kind of what, this is the starting point. Or if I'm shopping online, as so many people are, or I'm looking at plugs now, bulb, bulk bulbs, and um, <clears throat> seeds, uh, I kind of know I can edit it down. I don't need to try every single flower that exists out there. I have some, some clear kind of guardrails to help kind of rein things in. And many of these things will um, some of the daffodils and uh, maybe the tulips don't naturalize as well, but daffodils will naturalize some of the alliums, things like that. Um, and then I'm focusing much more on adding perennials as we kind of carry through the next, probably next two big gardening years. <clears throat> and then if you have seen my drawing for landscaping video, um, so I have these two, these are two large beds along my front fence. And I did a separate video on how I use Procreate to do these drawings, both the bird's eye and the perspectives. So you can check those out just for, um, these. I'm just gonna be showing images, but the previous two pages, this is the area we're talking about. It goes from full sun, to full shade and actually this tree has changed a little bit and then we kind of jump back into full sun back here and this area is still in progress so uh no plants no plant plan for there yet so these are the plants that are in that drawing that we just flashed up 
uh, obviously not on a, you know, individual petal type of sketch. It's just kind of fields of color. And the bed's a little larger than um, the sketch shows, or I expanded it. <clears throat> and then this is less specific, but I own a lot of these plants. And so I haven't decided what's going where, but all of these are very shade tolerant. They kind of have thrived in the two shady condition areas of my garden. And so right now I'm just kind of working on getting them all together. And then the layering is pretty straightforward. I've got climbing hydrangeas for the fences, um, some pyrus, and um, not sure if I'm gonna find a lindera, either shrub or tree form to kind of work in there, but climbing hydrangeas we have, pyrus we have, um, lots of ferns, lots of astilbe, lots of hellebore. Um, I have had some success with a few types of camellia and then um, heuchera and heucherella, super great for me. Epimedium, I have a, a deep love for barren wort epimedium. And uh, this is an amber one and this is a purple one. So uh, I feel like those two beds will kind of flow together and I love this idea for a more shady, deeper shady area. Uh, it reflects a lot of light, it's in a narrow part of the garden so it doesn't look like deep dark forest shade but I think these will be like, this is just to me a really super interesting shady palette. And actually, this is Goggy Camellia. If anyone sees this plant anywhere, please DM me. Uh, it's been hard to find. It's been hard to find in person, I should say. I would like to try to find it someplace where I can look at the plant. I uh, haven't really been able to find them in real life. I can only find them online. And I got to say, this past year, I ordered a few, you know, trees on kind of a lark. <laughs> and I was really disappointed with what I got. So these two beds, uh, I feel like they flow together with the color getting a little bit more saturated as we move into the shadier part because that's where you wanna see the flowers kind of jump. So sketches of that area. Um, so the front of my office is here. This is where we are. And these are two existing beds. Um, this is kind of grass meadow texture, and this has, it's sort of a hodgepodge. So I'm using this time um, and as an opportunity, this planning time, I'm not actually flipping these beds around before fall, but event in next spring when it, it's safe to start moving things around, I will be refreshing this so this whole area flows together a lot more easily. When I started the garden three years ago, these were the first two flower beds I did and they're disconnected. They're <laughs> like many things I do, just all about colors and flowers that I like and they don't really flow together. And uh, this feels like a separate garden from this one and I just wanna see everything feel a little more harmonious. We also have a very dark pink color now on our house so some of these plants specifically look really good in front of the paint color. Mm, I don't think that's in the right place. <laughs> so, um, so it's a smaller garden. Some of these things will get planted this year and some of them are already there. I have some laurel petalum. I have a uh, yellow twig dogwood. I have some Pyrrhus. I don't have Lindera yet, but <clears throat> I love the berries in the spring and the greeny color through the summer. And then this fall color is like one of my favorites. And it's not a super huge tree. So none of these areas so far that we're talking about can take a very large tree. And then just kind of popping in some, um, some really interesting allium. This little Caratavians you can see it. Um, it's really short. It's like only eight inches tall. So um, I have an area that kind of feels like a little rock garden that we have some sedums that sometimes come back, sometimes don't. So I think I'm just going to pop them in there. 
Um, peonies and roses is not huge, so I don't have anything that's taking up a ton of space. I'm not entirely sure I can fit all these iris in there. I have to actually go through and um, see some of these I have multiples of. So um, I may have to plant some of them in another area for the coming spring and I'll move them next fall. I think that's the only bummer of some of the things that I love is that the peonies and iris, like the iris really should be planted in July through September. Mine are potted, so they've established root systems. So as long as I feel like, as long as I get them in the ground in the next two weeks, I'll be okay. Um, they all look really healthy, but peonies really should only be moved at, at at this time of year and so that's part of why I just don't really shuffle things around in the spring in terms of some of these bigger more costly plants. Uh, I did move one of my prized peonies and um, it, I, I did it in the summer. I felt like I had to and I, I we will see how it does. I hope I don't have to replace it. It was expensive and it was enough to convince me that I shouldn't be moving them outside of the month of October. You can check out the peony video where I like totally geek out on peonies, but I do show planting and pulling, pulling one up from another area and moving it and then how I plant them. And I'll just be doing that on repeat for the next two weeks. And I'll take some footage of me planting in these different areas, but I'm not going to do a whole talking video about the planting process because it just takes twice as long. Um, so the back porch area, um, all of these are actually going into really large holding containers where <clears throat> I will actually be um, banking them in material and they're in very, very deep containers to try and simulate the ground because if you followed the series we had planned to put a patio in this year and unfortunately just due to staffing issues our hardscaping contractor couldn't do the job this year so he has um, some staff lined up for very early into next year uh, so as soon as the ground's not frozen we'll be working on that so that means I can't really plant things in this area, but this is what it will look like. Um, the wisteria and these two, these are two big hydrangea. I think that's what I was pretending they were. Um, this patio and the flower beds, TBD. Um, this is what the patio layout will look like, what the gardens look like, I'm not sure, but the good news is we should have it the patio in place before it's really time to plant spring flowering plants. So I will likely be able to get compost and beds and get all the plants that I overwinter into their beds. So fingers crossed. But um, <clears throat> this bed is, uh, you know, a lot of these plants are already there and together. They just have to kind of get shuffled around uh, my husband loves the color purple, he loves lavender, he loves pollinator friendly plants and um, I personally really really love those colors with coral. It's one of my favorite spring combinations. So uh, originally uh, what started this was I found this peony, it's called Kiko, it's a Monrovia introduction and it goes anywhere from like lavender to coral. It's kind of a color shifter and so it looks really good with both the purples and things that Tim really likes and the corals and kind of bright pinks and some of these orangey apricots and, and things like that that I like. So this is the plan for there. Uh, we do have, we have no shrubs or trees for that area beyond um, some, some hydrangea that are already in place from, that have been here maybe 20 years. Um, so we do have a telephone pole <laughs> that we would like to put something to kind of screen. I have always wanted a tricolor beach and um, I haven't found the right Laura Petalum that will stay evergreen and happy in my soil and climate, but I'm hoping I do. Um, and then you'll see not every page has it, but um, 
This, these are some Silby that I already have. These are some Sweet Pea that I grew that I liked. A Zinnia that I think might work. So for the most part, this side of the planting plan is a lot in flow, but it'll sort of help me as I go through my seeds, as I go through any plugs or plants that I've pre-ordered for next spring, I'll be able to stay in my, my lane. Um, <clears throat> in terms of color, and hopefully the space that I have. So um, I think this drawing is also in the Procreate drawing video. So I draw on top of photos. So um, I wish I were that good at freehanding things, but I am not. Um, so here is bird's eye view of the backyard. Um, this is the potager. This is our parking pad. And then um, this is the Dahlia, the current Dahlia Island. And then these are the flower beds that I've been working on putting in. I feel like I got to like here. Um, and I know you can't read all of these, but I promise you it means something to me. This is behind my office. This is another hardscaping project. Um, I think I have a drawing of it. I'll come back. Okay, so this is the back of the house. Uh, I am doing natural stone steps to replace um, a few sad stepping stones that we dug out of the hillside. Again, our dark paint. Um, so this is a flower bed that I think it's in maybe the tour video. It's, it's in one of the, the summer videos and people asked how I kind of plan this out. So welcome, this is that whole video. So, um, <clears throat> so th this is just to kind of help me plan um, the actual depth and spacing. Um, the For some reason, when I export these photos, it erases the grid. There's graph paper behind this. Uh, and this is all through Procreate. Um, so it's actually done to um, a four foot to one inch scale. So. I really can kind of plan out like this is how much space I have if things overhang the fence like we want to plant a kind of large specimen southern magnolia in the corner of this fence. I, the idea would be to limit up and have it clear the fence and kind of create an evergreen screen. So I can plan that out for full size. Same with some of these tree shapes. Now, will they be these exact trees? I'm not sure. Something Tim and I kind of struggle with is that my need for so much variety makes me want a little of everything, whereas he really likes, I guess the nice way to say it is not boring, but rhythmic plantings where we get some more repetition. But I am working on planning for things to be in more groups of three or five um, and keeping only one of something. Like even the peonies that I'm planting, even though I'm only getting one of each plant, I'm sort of thinking about them in color groups of three so that they have some statement and I don't end up with like a very polka dot landscape. Or maybe I will, but I'm sure it will look pretty. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to go all the way back to it, but um, this area heading up in front of my office is shade. And so this is the shade bed. And it's actually kind of strange. Up near the front walkway, it has full sun. And then we have a giant white pine tree that creates shade on like three quarters of it. And then... <clears throat> At the bottom of it, there's a part shade area. So it kind of runs the gamut. Um, so in some of the areas that got enough sun or will be in full sun because there isn't tree cover yet, in the early spring, I'm doing some of this squill and muscari and all white daffodils. I successfully grew anemones in one of these areas last year. So I'll be trying that again using more black and white and trying some misty blues. Jerusalem blue is um, another variety. I've used all of these as cut flowers, so I just kind of want to see which ones make me happy in the landscape. Um, I could only really fit one peony in the area that gets enough sun, and I then kind of did some iris around it. And these are iris that range from 
you know, border bearded, kind of short, tiny iris to tall bearded, and they're planted in clusters. And then I could not possibly put every shady plant that I have on here, but uh, when we do a tour, you'll be able to see. But um, things that I really like, lungwort, barrenwort, September, or Japanese anemones. I have some truly deep shade loving hydrangeas. Um, Brunnera, which is this, you know, silvery leaf. Uh, lots of ferns. My husband loves ferns. I have a really pretty camellia in this, in this, I feel like I want to call it a neighborhood. Um, but, um, so, and then we have white pine is a very large tree. And I do think that I would like to add in some blue green evergreen texture at some point. Um, but I kept it mostly neutral and lots of chartreuse green and silver greens and blue greens and whites and creams because <clears throat> of all the beds in our yard, this is truly the the part, the middle of it is the deepest shade and we also plan to paint our fence or stain our fence a dark color. So I would like everything to kind of pop from there. Uh, carrying on down the fence, it goes into full sun. This is where I feel like <clears throat> uh, I have to kind of think about how you're looking through and looking around the whole garden. So I'll circle back to that overview. We kind of have creams, blush, white, a little bit of burgundy, a little bit of champagne, teeny bit of lavender to kind of flow through. And this is a large bed. So th this will hold a lot and it will hold some more perennials than I have listed here. And I, I did successfully grow some Lysianthus this year. So I'm actually ordering it in a plug form because seed starting it was nightmarish. And so, um, and actually all of these shrubs exist. They're just pretty tiny right now. Uh, the island is currently the Dahlia Garden. This bed goes in front of this bed. And so I feel like with the, the dark paint of our fence, we'll get a lot of clarity on this. And then there's some more saturated in similar tones kind of in front of it. And then as we turn the corner, because uh, these beds kind of all flow together, things start to fall back into more of what I think of as like Tim's palette, but it's really my palette. <laughs> but um, it's lavenders and, and uh, purples and plums and brick rose red, um, but with like a little bit of a more muted to brick type of cast to it. So whereas the, the back porch garden is very bright coral. Everything here has a little bit more of a muted feel to it with the richness kind of being from some of those saturated colors of the peonies. And then I do have some really, really beautiful saturated perennials, Baptisia, Penstemons, um, Joe Pie Weed, some things that really like allow these to shine. And then the tree and shrub work in this bed is really going to make a beautiful canvas uh, backdrop for these. It's just, unfortunately, we could not get the plants that we were looking for at the beginning of this year. So it will look a little funny unless we're able to start getting some shrubs in March, April next year. I have this bed that is literally the berry bed. <laughs> I did expand it. Uh, it started, I put all my blueberries there and I had a strawberry tower of planters. The strawberries have since moved into the potager garden and now it's black and white raspberries, a uh, couple types of blueberries. I got a really lovely Ruby Falls redbud tree, some Annabelle and Invincible Mauvette hydrangea. And these are just a couple peonies and um, this is a very lovely single petal rose called Dainty Bess. Uh, this is another area that's gonna be in progress. 
Uh, I don't know that I feel particularly like excited about this Picati and Bordeaux mix of anemones. I think we've reached the point where there are enough black and white anemones in this garden, but um, right now I'm not sure uh, that I want to try. I did do some ranunculus in this area and it, they didn't enjoy the drainage in this bed. So, or maybe they were just near some plants that were sucking up all the available water. So I, I'm not putting a ton of bulb effort into this bed. I wanna leave it kind of open and flexible for perennials and pollinator friendly stuff. And um, <clears throat> I would like to put a water feature or some kind of water element in here because I didn't get to eat a lot of blueberries this year. The, the birds ate a lot of them and we didn't have great luck. I did put a net up and tacked it down really well, but we still got a bird. And we were able to save him, but he had to have water and like rest for an hour before he could fly off. So I don't want that to happen again. Back of office, uh, because of the dark paint and dark stone, I think everything back here really needs to pop. So this is the plan. And I've, I've made the beds though the steps will not be going in until March. So um, I did slide down the hill quite a bit. So I'm just making an effort to plant the bulbs in this area with enough clearance for the equipment, understanding that I may lose some of the bulbs, but I'll just be excited to have a set of stairs back there. And then I do have a group of, of very pretty white containers that I do back there. And it's very shady right up against the porch. So I don't think you can see them, but I have caladiums, like assorted white and pink and white and green caladiums in those pots. Side of the fence is a whole separate story. So um, I sort of struggle. I do these drawings really to help my husband to understand what it is that I'm trying to do. So what we've done for the last few years is just kind of save shrub and tree information with photos on our phones as we see things that we like. So the idea would be to kind of, and I couldn't find a lot of info on this. I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but um, part of why our garden didn't feel that large was because it was full of these like gigantic old yews and evergreen shrubs that I imagine the previous family planted for privacy. but we have this really wide border outside of our fence line and it's hilled and so i was like well let's put screening stuff outside the fence why do we have to put it inside um and it kind of gives us an opportunity to do two huge garden areas so um the only thing we're bickering about is this telephone pole tree this tree will probably have to go inside the fence and this is a maple that's on my property that we're not sure if it's gonna make it. But the idea would be to do some of that rhythmic and some of that repetition that Tim really likes with some of the plants that he truly loves, like 12 foot high grasses and things like that. Um, you know, uh, Arborvitae's, um, I love purple leaf plum. Um, we both really want um, like a four, trunked uh four trunk crepe myrtle which would be inside one of the beds so i like the idea of kind of thinking about it as sort of all flowing together but this is the view we're on a corner and this is all clear space so we want some privacy some screening some evergreen some grass um and it's a lot of space and it's currently covered in weed fabric to keep it from getting weedy and uh, this is an area where I'll be putting in a lot of plugs for some of these kind of fields of color just because this this whole area is a couple thousand square feet and um, it's just hard to put a lot of money in from the budget into an area that's outside the fence for me. I know it's important and obviously we care about aesthetics because we spent the money to get a nice fence. Um, but 
it's just, it is hard, but I like the idea of kind of getting it to a place where it's a lot of perennial grasses, evergreens, shrubs, low maintenance shrubs, shrubs that don't need a lot of work and attention, but have enough variety in color and texture. So that's the plan. That's what I'm gonna be working towards. Almost everything that you saw on the different sheets as we scroll back, the peonies, roses, bulbs, and iris are all here and they need to get into their homes. And as I plant them, uh, I'll do a video of kind of how you can see me kind of collect everything, get it in there. And then I'm using a power, a power planter, like a big auger to do most of the holes. And this is kind of the working plan as we go forward. So when spring f rolls around in what feels like just a few months, I'll be ready to go and I can, um, I don't know that I'll make Tim carry these plans like a merchandising plan, but I will certainly be referring to them as we look for trees and shrubs and things that we need. So the nice thing about this is that many of the fun accessories of the beds are in place and I don't feel the need to buy any more of these flowering plants. And now I'll be able to see kind of how they grow and choose the right canvas or backdrop for them through shrubs. Did I do it backwards? Totally, but I blame 2020 as much as I blame my love of flowers for that. Um, and honestly, it probably worked out well that we weren't able to do every single thing that we wanted to do because we really live, you know, we're at home. We are living in this space. I'm in that garden every day and I know better now how I want to use it and how I want to see it and how I can maintain it, which are all really important things, which is, <clears throat> you know, something I think a lot of people think about or hear about when they're renovating a home. You know, sometimes you want to live in it for a little while before you paint it or decide how you want to renovate it. And I feel like we needed that with the garden. We were here for a few years. We knew we had to have the tree work done. But <clears throat> I feel like I might have made some decisions that I would regret had I been able to just rush in this year and throw in all these beds and then fill them with plants and then put drip system on them and, you know, now I'm able to really tailor the needs for each bed based on the plants and color families that are going into them. And I really look forward to putting together pollinator friendly perennials and grasses and, uh, you know, evergreen texture to kind of enhance all of this. So I do know it's backwards. I know that I'm going to have to pay very close attention as I plant to spacing and leaving room for layering but I think it'll be fun. So next up, some planting. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.